Hello, welcome back. I'm Scott. And I'm Allison. And we're Jarhead and Ginger's Journey. Today, we're gonna take you on a tour of Forest Hills RPI RV Resort. It also has a golf course. Come on. Well, leave it to us to find a restaurant to do a review of while we're doing a park review as well. We're here at Izzo's off of the golf course at the RV resort here. So let's go in and see what we can find. We just finished up our lunch. Uh, the view is fantastic. Look at the lake and we're uh, looking over the 18th hole. Um, my burger was a burger. It was all right. Nothing to write home about. How about your food? Mine was okay. The wings were okay. Um, the fries were like frozen fries or whatever. It, it's more like um, some, something that you'd whip up at home, you know, from out of the frozen aisle at the store. But uh, it was edible and we actually got boxes to take it home. So that'll tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we did have a decent view. As you can see behind us, we're on the, uh, well, this is the 18th hole of the golf course. I guess you can't tell that, but uh, it overlooks from the uh, restaurant itself. So that was kind of cool. Okay, we're coming up the hill to the entrance of the RV park, and there's actually two entrances. So if you're going east on 10, which is the direction we're heading now, you're gonna try. You're gonna need to remember to take the first uh, entrance into the park or exit off of this highway, and I'll show you why. The speed limit on the highway here is 65, so coming off of this, uh, you're gonna have to brake pretty well. You can see in the distance there the Forest Hills Resort sign. This is the first entrance into the Forest Hills RV Park. This is the one you'll want to take if you're coming from the east. It's a whole lot easier. You can come right off the highway like that and then make this first right turn here and you'll go up into the, um, the parking area for the golf course. So you'd come around this way and then you'd head over to the right to go down to the office. If you miss that set that first um, turn, there is a second turn, and this is the turn my GPS actually took me to, but I do not recommend this turn, and I will show you why. Here's the turn coming off of I-10 if you're eastbound. This is the second turn, the one I, I would not take. It's a complete U-turn here coming off of I-10. And then once you come off of Highway 10, not I-10, Highway 10, you have to make this left turn, which is also more than a 90 degree turn. So you're gonna go two pretty sharp, hard turns in a row to get up here. And then once you get to the top of this hill, you would make a right turn to go towards where the office is, this direction. Here we are on the road that goes back towards the office. We completely missed this sign to the right here that says RV office check-in when we first got here. We were just looking for what we thought would be a normal RV uh, area with the gate and everything or whatever the case is, and it just wasn't that way. So when you come in with your RV, I would pull up here to where this sign right here that says RV sales office and park because to the left across the street is where the office is that you're gonna to have to go into and check in. Be aware of this office closes at three o'clock in the afternoon and you're supposed to be here prior to the three o'clock office closure to check in. This is the office. This is where you check in after you pull over. You'll go inside, you'll get your map, check in, make your payment. This building also has a heated indoor pool that is seasonal. We just measured the exit here, which the lady told me to use as the entrance when I came through because the other side has a turn in it, which is make it a lot worse to get in here. This thing is 12 feet from one side to this shack, but the shack has about a four inch overhang up there. So you have about 11 foot, what, six inches? 
11, uh, eight, 11 feet, eight inches you have to get in here. When I go through here in my truck, I look and I have probably less than a foot on either side of my dually uh, on my fenders. One fender almost hits this, one fender almost hits the old lift gate. 22 inches, 22 inches from my, my truck to the old thing here. Probably about the same on the other side, guys. So now you know how tight this is, what we're talking about here. Forest Hills is an 18-hole championship golf course. You'll find several water obstacles as well as uh, rolling hills throughout the course. Along with the RV park and the golf course, there's also an 18-hole miniature golf course. It is not included in your RPI price. It is $10 for adults and $6 for children. <laughs> Some of the amenities include this public meeting area. We actually saw live music here going on the other night. This is the outdoor pool. It's very nice and clean and there is also a hot tub. There are laundry facilities and a clubhouse. As you enter the park, you'll see these uh, long-term or seasonal sites. Um, you can purchase these sites. They are still available. There are tiny homes and RVs all within this section. Notice all the mature trees. Some of them have limbs that are a little low, but you can easily avoid those. Most of the park is made up of these, but as you'll see, as we get to the end of the park, that's where the RV sites are. You'll see down the hill that that is where the RV spots are. This is a new addition to the park. They are, they are all 50 amp full hookup. There's a limit to two pets per site and they must be on a leash at all times. They are still selling seasonal sites. So I don't know how many RV spots there are because that could change day to day. The golf course winds in and out throughout the park. Here we are in one of the sites. As you can see, they're, they're, most of them anyway, are paved all the way back. It looks like it's fairly new uh, uh, pavement, no holes or anything like that. Come on, we'll see what they got. I'll look in the pedestal. You see they have both, or all three, 50, 30, and 20 amp uh, outlets on our site. Uh, we have had zero power issues at all here. We have the power watchdog on. It hasn't tripped one time, hasn't thrown a single uh, code yet. So that's a plus. Here's the dump. Why it's a foot off the ground, I'm not sure. But um, that could pose a little bit of issue with uh, the RVers out there. You are going to have to, you know, lift your hose up to drain the last bit out of it because that sucker's pretty tall. Next, come down here to the water. 
This one doesn't have it. Our site had, um, it looked like a, uh, a backflow preventer valve on it that was leaking. I called the park and told them they sent a plumber out that said it was my stuff, but it was current, it was obviously leaking out of the, that back, back flow preventer. So what I did was I was going to try, I was going to just take it off, but as I started to uh, turn it, it actually fixed the leak. So I fixed their stuff. I'll send them a bill maybe later. <laughs> and then back there, they have coax cable um, wrapped around this because as you saw on the way in, there's a bunch of tiny homes here. And I imagine that's for either uh, TV or internet or something like that. Um, or fiber optic. I think that's fiber optic for, for something like that. So these, that's what the, uh, the sites look like down here. If you do come down here, you want one closer to the water, which is this direction, because the ones on the other side of the hill are actually sloped uh, uphill away from the road. This is our first RPI that we stayed in. And I would say, other than the crazy turn off the highway and the crazy entrance at the guard shack that isn't used anymore. This is a pretty nice place. When we were first coming through and we were up there with all the tiny homes and the and all the, the bigger trees and everything, I was thinking to myself, there's no way, we're, there's no room for us to back in here. But then when we came up over the hill and it opened up into this bigger, new the new bigger area here, I was like, okay, we could do this. And we actually got in fairly uh, easily. We're in site 167. Um, I think that I would take the one just past that because you have a road that you can pull into and then just back straight up. We did have quite a difficult time um, backing in because there's a ditch right across the, the street from our site and it was, it was just a difficult 90 degree angle turn. Um, it was frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you noticed or not, but all of the sites down here are 90 degree turns. They're not angled at all for the road. So when you do uh, get here, expect that 90 degree hard turn to get into your uh, site backing up. Would you stay here again? I think we would. I would, yeah. Um, it would be a lot easier with a much smaller RV, but... We and, got we've got. <laughs> and since we're a thousand trails members, we also added the RPI. And like we said, this is an RPI. So it was only 10 bucks a night, guys, for full hookups and a dump site. It's hard to beat. Can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're still here, thanks for sticking around to the end. We'll see you next time on Jarhead, Jarhead and, and Ginger's, Ginger's Journey. Journey. Bye. Bye. <laughs>